Hey, good morning, everyone. Morning, Jack. Hello, sir. How are you? Hey, Steve, good morning. Morning. Hey, good evening, Anders. Hello. 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 Hey, Annie. Hey. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Is, is this the first time you're joining this call? Uh, the OCP reference design one, yes. Uh, I'm a former colleague of Jaime, and he said uh, you need uh, some support with the next paper. So okay, yeah, welcome. Okay. Yeah, please feel free to introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, if you would uh, want to, and you know, I guess people, more people are joining in, and again. Welcome to the group. Thank you. Uh, I work for Cloud and Heat. Uh, uh, we are a small cloud service provider in, in Germany. And um, we have a background in, in heat reuse for data centers, uh, but especially small data centers like um, edge cases below uh, 100 kilowatts of power. Um, but we have a few reference projects already in Germany, and uh, I hope that I can, well, introduce my, uh, yeah, what I know into into this project. Awesome, thanks, Anne, and and welcome again. Yeah, I would be happy to you know understand and uh, uh, your learnings at some point. And we are also our group is working on a white paper. And you know we we will you know share it with you and obviously you are more than welcome to provide your feedbacks onto this living document. And I can see other folks joining in. Hey, hi, Peter. Good evening. Oh, hello. Can, but but while we're while we're still gathering, I'm I'm just arriving from uh, from class uh, since I'm a university lecturer here in Uppsala, Sweden. For those of you who might not know me. Uh, but uh, the club is called Designing for Digital Innovation. Uh, could, since, since I have such a great crowd of, of people here, could anyone say what they think is digital innovation? Well, here. Digital innovation. Digital innovation as a concept. Is, is that a term you're using at all? I'm not sure. It, it's not widely used. Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> I would uh, let other uh, others chime in. Hey, hey, all have you all been using uh, digital innovation? I guess pretty much in this world, everything going forward is digital, and it's it's part of digital innovation. I guess. Uh, I feel like I have probably a too broad of a definition that I would give that, but that would be looking at historically processes or applications that historically had no type of technology or um, I'm trying to think of the correct term, like it, ways to increase efficiency by utilizing technology, um, mm -hmm. taking yeah. those processes and injecting some type of digital technologies to, you know, revamp the process, make it more efficient, bring it into the 21st century type thing would be my explanation of that. Mm -hmm. there's, a, like there's, a, there's a similar term that's being used in some industries, um, digital transformation. I've been involved in trying to buy business software for a small mm -hmm. startup company um, ERP software, for example. And what I see is that lots of companies have standard processes that are legacy processes that have been going on for years that sometimes are uh, manpower, person power extensive and could be streamlined using more modern software. And so the change from legacy practices to yeah, what, what, whatever our current modern practices that are made available by faster computing and 
uh, you know, what, what some people are calling AI because they don't know what else to call it, uh, occurs to them as a transformation, a digital transformation. Yeah. I'd like to add to that. Having come from the chemical industry, they're talking a lot about things like digital twins. So instead of having just a, uh, you know, a, a process or a piece of equipment, now they have something, a model for it, and they can emulate its performance based on mathematical models and things like that. So uh, you can predict how the real equipment is going to operate and put in the operating parameters into the digital model. So, I mean, we've been using process modeling for many years, but now they're getting more granular, if you will, and more coupled instead of just a piece of equipment on its own, like a heat exchanger. Now I'll have a heat exchanger, a pump, a tank, and look at what happens when the level varies and the flow and the pressures and all that other stuff. Good point. Uh, it's a good conversation uh, on the digital innovation topic. And thanks, Peter, for bringing that up. I'm sorry I've been off the camera uh, for my bandwidth reasons, but it's a, it's a nice uh, topic and it's a important one, interesting one. And, and in my, again, I let's wrap that up with, with uh, one more thought maybe. Like, I guess we all have more data points now. And, you know, even with our, you know, reflecting back on Steve's point on digital twin, we, we have more levers that we could control now. And, and 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 that's been the part of the digital innovation, I guess. Like, thank, thank you very much for 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 adding to add, adding to this, and I will yeah, I will discuss with further with my students. And thanks. Hi, hi, May. Thank you. Uh, we are just discussing a, an open topic on on digital innovation, but uh, we can jump into the reference design. Um, so I guess we have pretty pretty good uh, crowd, and uh, we also have Anne joining the call. She she briefly introduced herself, and and uh, Jaime, would you want to walk the team through the major changes that you did, and what are all the missing components on the uh, uh, still missing components on the? Well, I, I will leave maybe David to do it since he's sharing. Okay. I think and he's. Oh, 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 sorry, I thought you were sharing. My bad. Ah, sorry, no please, sorry, David. <laughs> Oh no problem. Or do you want to share your screen, Jaime? You're no, it's okay. a better editor, but okay. No problem. No problem. I am. Okay, I am. Right. Inside. I'm logged in as well, so I can do stuff. Okay. Cool. All right. Um. So yeah. Uh. Maybe before we jump into sort of the different changes and sort of what's left, I did have one question. When is the next iteration of slides due? And the reason I'm asking that is because I think we have some people on this call that might be contributing towards updating. Um the images that we might want to use for the slide deck. Has anybody, have you heard when that next iteration of slides will be due? Um, you mean for the summit now? Yes. Uh -huh. um, I think is the, whoa, um, 9th of September, I think you'll yep. get feedback. And after that, I think you have, again, two weeks, more or, le more or less two or three weeks. Okay. I, uh, I could at the end, we'll, we'll probably go through this at the end. I could show the slides just to show the images that we had grabbed um, just so we have awareness. Okay. So I think it's more okay. important to discuss about the paper, right? Yeah, exactly. Ah, okay. Um, all right. So minor changes throughout here. Um, do you want to comment since we do have quite a few people on here about how best for them to list their names? I didn't quite understand this comment or who put that. I did it. So um, we we have to. I mean, there have there are some um, rules for listing the authors and contributors. So the authors of uh, of a paper need to be members of OCP and or uh, oh. volunteers. Uh, otherwise, they have to be contributors. So we have probably to change this table in a way, uh, but we will do this in the end. I okay. think just as a, yeah, as a placeholder enough. comment. Okay. Sure. Uh, that's a good point. I'm not an official member. Uh, I know OCP. So okay. All right. Executive summary that hasn't changed. Uh, purpose hasn't changed, although it kind of got cleaned up a bit. I think in the introduction, not too much change there, except I did move some content that was here a little bit farther down. Um, 
And I think I also moved as part of the introduction, I moved this statement that was kind of buried in design considerations. This was pulled from the uh, data center's heat reuse document. I think it was sort of a nice way to start before jumping into about, you know, what the paper is and um, companion documents and so forth. So mm -hmm. having deleted content, just move things around a bit um, for those that haven't seen it for a while. Um, we do now then kind of switch and forget maybe in a smaller group, we sort of talked about moving the business considerations ahead of design considerations. So that's been done. I did sort of reorder and sort of put stakeholder section first, because I really think this is a nice uh, uh, stakeholder matrix map to show uh, before we maybe jump straight into the maturity model. And again, please shout out if people disagree or would like, you know, to discuss any of this. Um, So if we're okay with that, then if somebody wants to volunteer, maybe just to kind of talk through this stakeholder uh, map, I uh, just sort of highlighting here. There's a lot of comments and so forth. Uh, I don't know how people prefer to kind of highlight what needs to still be done. I just find sometimes with the comments, it kind of gets um, uh, a little harder to kind of delete or update some of that in terms of the highlighting. So uh, different preferences. But... All this. This is uh, just maybe for some con to give some context maybe to the, the folks that were in person at the discussions. We had um, a couple of, of calls together with the Net Zero Innovation Hub board. Um, this is a, a, a group of companies and they are, well, it's more, I would say it's more or less European, European uh, group of companies, although these are global companies mostly. And um, they are uh, focused on developing uh, pilot projects. Um, ah, perfect. Thank you very much, David. So um, they uh, have different work streams as well, and one of them is uh, about heat reuse. It, it's where they are most advanced, and they have developed some. Also, so they have written some content as uh, bases for that future pilot, and uh, there were a lot of common points with what we were doing. So we asked them to contribute, and they said okay. So that's why there is some input from them here in this paper. And well, we see Danfoss because that is the one leading the uh, one of the leaders of the initiative and one of the leaders of the heat reuse workshop. That's why we see Danfoss. Uh, but I mean, we will take the the brands outside. Okay. So as far as you're aware, we will be just in ZIH Net Zero Innovation Hub. Um, the the figure we will create it as an ZIH, yeah, exactly. And the, the, okay. this has to change. I mean, then we have to take the 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 content of this this slide and and put it properly. Right, uh, exactly. Uh, Crop it and everything else. Yeah. Yep. And uh, just to let you know, Jaime, we we Hi, did change. Hey, <laughs> hey, yeah, um, we we changed the uh, template to the Net Zero Innovation Hub template. Uh, so um, I can I can send the updated with that. Perfect. As well. Perfect. Thank you. I didn't I didn't see you before. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, and so I think we probably got at least eight to ten sort of screen grabs or uh, these sort of images from uh, Net Zero Innovation Hub. They're really great so i think then we'll just add a little bit of discussion here um this is where i think i dropped it sort of seemed out of place to have this really high up in my opinion so i sort of moved this note about uh, excess heat not exclusive to data centers sort of after this sort of in the uh, stakeholders um consideration i also sort of changed it just to sort of de-emphasize it was sort of uh taken up like a full page the way it was listed before with the uh bulleted list, I just sort of condensed it down. It's good sidebar, but um, don't want it to dominate uh, sort of the, the look and feel. Then we sort of have the maturity model and uh, Jaime, you put that in a nice table format. Um, so then we're sort of moving into the design considerations. Um, and then let's see, do we know on the CAD, are we wanting to do any more changes with this one? Um, is there anything in the work? Uh, so uh, Siddharth uh, is not able to join the call today, he said. Um, okay. But but this is uh, this is a very first iteration. Uh, 
that just shows our very first model or, or reference design with the heat exchange room, which is that gray room. Um, and you can you can scroll down, you can see people have been starting uh, to add other designs. And uh, in fact, Jaime elaborated uh, the different possible scenarios from, uh, you, if you could scroll down slightly lower, yep. So in, initially we had air cooling, liquid cooling and hybrid cooling scenarios. Now we just, you know, elaborated it out so that any, any specific uh, mechanical air, air handling mm -hmm. equipment vendor can update their uh, uh, scenarios and we could start building these uh, reference, reference designs without a lot of duplication going forward. So, so what you saw above was one of the scenarios listed here. There is again like 16 scenarios here. We don't have to do the CAD images for all these 16 because you right. know some, just showing with heat pump, without heat pump, just simple uh, scenarios part of the maturity models. But this is what, uh, you know, the uh, team or Siddharth is just gonna be working on, just showing models of how it could look like. If you if you could scroll down a little bit further. I, I was gonna say that figure that you have above mm -hmm. is kind of, maybe, I don't know if you wanna change the caption, it says example mm -hmm. is, this would be exactly. scenario 2A, I believe it is. Yep. <clears throat> That's an action yep. item. Then we'll, we'll need to mention cooling. It would be a direct to chip cooling. Yep. And we'll need to um, mention the scenarios before that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We could. We could. We could move this. But good point. But good call out because that is one one of the scenarios. And again, uh, uh, David and, and Mark. It's we... two A. It's really two A and three A. But yep. it's not immersion cooling. It's direct to chip cooling. Yep. The other thing too, what we could kind of do is also sort of introduce the table here. I kind of like showing a figure first, so your eyes are drawn to the nice figure, and then the table can come later. Yeah. And then maybe some of these get put here, but then the rest are in an appendix or something. Yeah. Yep. Depending on how many they end up are able to do. Yep. Well. We need, but in any case, we need uh, in that fantastic drawing. We need a, a couple of more elements, yeah. And um, we still need to, uh, yeah, draw these according to the SLD that we have. Yep. The line diagram that we have, uh, uh, yeah, below. One more. Yep. We almost want to make sure that this comes is kind of grouped together with this, and then come back to this. Afterwards. Yes, I, I agree. The, the figure, then the table, or the table and the figure, whichever you, order you want to do it in. Sure. And I'll cut and paste in a moment, but then there's also this comment here. Yeah, because, yeah, we, like, we need to populate all different scenarios, and we need to not just have it in a schematic form, but just to give, you know, more CAD drawing. But those would be under developments and we would add them and keep it in the appendix. And, and as they get matured, we could start having them part of the main part in, in the future iterations. Well, I or guess I just wasn't sure if this note was referring to this text here. Yes. And, and, uh, and well, the, that, that, the block diagram I added, I added in the one, right. I put in that text and that, that block diagram, cause it's really, oh. there's, three or four flavors of two-phase cooling, but basically the concept is just a little bit different, right? With two-phase cooling, you don't need an intermediate loop. You can either have the heat pump coupled directly or you can use wow. the condensation directly without having to have another heat exchanger in between. Okay, exactly. That's, that is, that's why I just drew that as a schema, as a uh, generic. This should come to probably uh, an appendix. Yep. Okay, so yeah. this section will get moved to an appendix for more details. I mean, this is great details. But yeah. just either that, or if we're going to do that, then we almost need to describe scenarios one through three before we hit four. In I think that would be good. You put it in the main text. It says, you know, with liquid, you know, with one is air cooling. That's kind of just real simple with conventional stuff. The scenarios two and three is liquid cooling, you know, where... <clears throat> the heat gets handed off to uh, 
you know, either a, a heat rejection, heat exchanger, mm -hmm. air cooled or water cooled, right? Mm -hmm. But it, but instead, that's where the HX would replace that normal heat rejection. Uh, okay, so we have one vote to maybe put in some of the more details in the main body. If we do that, then yeah, as long as we... Either that or they all go in the appendix. Exactly. I do, right. I do agree. You need a description somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The only other thing that I noticed is, you know, is supply. I guess I'm trying to, where possible, use the ASHRAE W classes. Does everyone know that the temperatures are in degrees C, or do you need to explicitly say? Uh, it, it would be helpful to probably explain that. Yep, agree. Yeah. In another document, we just had a very short paragraph about that, but oh, I just put it just put it in the header where F, FWS FWS just return temperatures parenthesis degree C. Mm -hmm. For the sake then of using the ASHRAE numbers, do we need one for the uh, IT? Water also, we're only showing the FWS water. We're making a presumption. Yeah, good point. Uh, actually, these are always the IT. They usually are, but we're showing that as yep. FWS, which is, I, th I think you need to show both. It's going to be part of the. Rather than the FWS, days. call it coolant supply return temperature, well, whether it's air, water. Uh, ASHRAE uses as FWS as their terminology. Yes, exactly. Yeah. What are the two terms that ASHRAE uses? Yes, the yes. facility water, but and what's the IT one? Tec technology, Poland. Technology, yeah. TCS. There you go. And it's the TCS that this references, is my understanding. Yes. Yep. Right. And so if you have a CDU or heat exchangers, you always got to make sure you account for that in your design so that your facility might be lower so that you meet. The yeah, I, I, think the it's IT. Just, I think it's just TCS in this case, right? Because this is yeah. the, the coolant going to the ITE. So you take away the FWS. If I agree, because in my mind, is what we care about is the, uh, yeah. no, the server. Hold, hold on, but the W classes are for facility water supply temperature. Yeah. I mean, the for, uh, for the, the A classes, yes, but the W classes are for facility water supply. I, so, I think um, we might need to show both because there's an implication that, uh, well, there's a lack of an implication of what, what quality water has to come back from the heat reuse system. If we're sending 30 degree C water out to the TCS, and that seems to be a standard that lots of people are driving for, now the what is FWS or whatever comes back from the heat host has to be considerably lower than 30. Yeah. Yeah, it's what I... It's, yeah, it's what we care about here, not really the IDE. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. Yeah. The, the, even though, you know, our discussion is based around heat reuse, the actual job is cooling the data. Yes, but in any case, what we're looking here is the temperatures that are going for heat reuse. I mean, we can have an, an additional column if you want, and we just have both, but it will overcomplicate this table, in my opinion. I guess we could leave this uh, facility water supply and return because that's what we have control over. Because you know, if you scroll up, you know, our image or our uh, activity starts right at the heat exchanger, which is the facility water loop, and we don't have control over the technology loop or or the fluid getting into the chips or the CDU. Yeah. No, that's a good point that we maybe we shouldn't get uh, too we, in the weeds. Yeah, we should comment about the, the 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 technology loop temperatures, but we don't have levers. Yeah. But the, the levers we have is the facility water control. But I thought the heat reuse is replacing facility water. Right. Really, I think what we're talking about is the supply and return temperatures from the from the IT. Whether you want to call it TCS or ITE, that's up to you guys. I mean, 
the, the IT wants to see going to it temperatures that are lower and it comes out hotter from it, right? It, yeah, and and the the point that's not made anywhere in the document is we haven't decided or recommended what is that difference. What's the approach across the heat exchanger is the short answer. And since we never say it, we probably have to at least acknowledge that there are two different water temperature systems. The TCS is one temperature and whatever we call FWS or heat, you know, whatever that side is, they are different and they do drastically affect how the cooling of the data uh, is applied. Yeah, that's uh, such a point. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting thing. I mean, um, it's not yeah, it's not a straightforward answer huh, to that. <laughs> right. I, I, mean, I, I don't. We don't get lost in the weeds, but I do think yeah. maybe a brief comment on that because the other thing I'm going to look up to is my understanding. These numbers are at the what's actually reaching the servers. If, yeah, it's a it's a, it's a fly. Then you have to say yes. If you if you click right. on the link there, you go to the. Yeah, I mean, I just put it there. I just scroll down, and you see that how is defined. Oh, good. The yeah, that one. No, not that one. Sorry, no. next. Next down. It's down, still down. down, I think, right? Yeah, and it's written there, and so facility water supply temperature is how they define yeah. it. You know, it's a W. I know it says yeah. facility, but one time when I looked into it, there's a paragraph. Oh, offline, I'll I'll find that, and it in my mind it introduces vagueness. It's okay. Uh, I mean, I, I think yeah. we have to it's, we have to be clear. I mean, and, and probably the best way is if, if you look at the at the line diagram, maybe we can put there T one, T two, T three, T four, and just explain. Yeah. Right. What, what did uh, Jack? Didn't you do that? Is it's your... an ashtrays facility water the the final heat rejection from the system, which we're now replacing with the with the heat recut reuse. Functionally, yeah. Uh, it's the I think all, all we're really the concerned. I think point. what we're really concerned with for heat reuse is what is the the ITE required supply and return temperatures, because that's the source of the heat for reuse. I don't. I don't think we should get bogged down with the ASHRAE definitions because I think that's just a little confusing. Uh. Somehow they don't think so. They they think they are the law, and they think we're confused. We talk <laughs> often. All right, but but still, we're by putting in here, <laughs> we're replacing facility water with end user uh, heating hey, water. Okay. Whatever. Good good good, good discussion. I think what maybe I can do is try to make a pass, then that people can comment yeah. on. Yeah. I think what it does is it's good though to raise the topic because it's like when you're talking about temperatures, but then we almost do need a. Uh, you need that line diagram. David, looking at the uh, CAD model graphic, are we, okay. should we really differentiate because we have a loop in the data hall box there going to the CDUs? That's your IT black box we don't care in this document no but then the there's really two separate loops here exactly one is in the data hall yeah the, that you know your direct chip whatever is being sent to the it equipment is not going to yeah. our heat reuse Correct. room that's right. a separate it's loop. the facility so have, side yeah yes so is that not so then I guess that's where Steve did, Steve had a misunderstanding, I believe. So Steve, but, no, I was actually the one that put in the W numbers. So no, I started all this and kind of went down a rabbit hole. But uh, mm -hmm. so then too, maybe what we can do here is maybe we just need to clarify. Very good point. And and I was struggling how to make that uh, point. Like there are two different distinct loops. One right. within the data hall and one outside the data hall, which is the facility. What 
going and what happens within the data hall and how they capture within the CDU, single phase or two phase. We don't care uh, we don't too much. Cap- we don't care too much, and that's been yeah. Different. But you do care about the temperature that yes, they're. Yes, yes, oh, oh, yes. agree. But it's sort we of a agree. black box. And there is a dedicated OCP group, and I, we can forward you that paper, Steve, which has been done by Meta, AMD, Intel, Nvidia folk, who are defining what should be the maximum CPU, GPU temperatures should be, and where the hardware should be architected for that. That is a dedicated group, and again, we we all need to work hands in you know you know hands oh, on together. Of course. Those are the ones defining the IT side temperature, and we don't have a lot of levers there. Okay, but we don't have to get into that. Side also, we could refer that OCP sub project. We could refer the ASHRAE reference. But then, yep. what we have refer or what we have levers is the facility side loop. And let's be clear. Yeah. Yep, that works. Okay. Y- yes, a comment from my side. Just remember that uh, uh, scenario F1 is uh, related to air also. Exactly. So it's a mix of things that we're talking about yes. in that in yeah. that table. So in this black box exactly. Here. So uh, may- maybe uh, scenario one that is air air cooling uh, need to have a little bit of uh, different. Uh, right definitions on the on the facility supply or the temperatures i think whether we are right with facility i think is a uh, as we were we were right with facility and then we just sure. can yep. put yep. some some extra notes to define and right just because when people are looking for the first time as well what temperatures are you grabbing when you're talking to your to your staff right. so it's like you're we just, went... you're just calling a facility side whether it's air water or whatever have you I believe so, yeah. Outside the the data wall, yeah. We're going to, Uh, you just passed that line diagram, I think just so. Oh, yeah, okay. The left side is the facility water or facility. Data center side. The facility side, whether it's water, air, two-phase, whatever, who cares, right? Right. Exactly. And the right side is the heat u- heat heat user. users, external heat users. Yep. So yeah, maybe this does need to be updated and get rid of the data center side and call that facility. Exactly. And then the two IT from IT needs to be changed as well. Yeah. And and from two IT from IT, we could just show a CDU or something else, and then call that the data center side. We also had we were going to show the bypass. Uh, Jack, did you have a should we use your graphic too? Because I think you were listing points like um, one, two, yeah, three, I'd be, four. I'd be happy to. Um, I don't. I'm sorry, I don't have it ready to post. Oh right no, now. that's fine. I, uh, just... I, I also yes. uh, in a graphic. I also some people had mentioned that there may or not need to be a bypass, and exactly. some people have mentioned that might be on either side. And yep. what's also not shown on here are where are the pumps, and why I have it in mind is. Because if we're doing economics, we need both the capital cost of the pumps and then the, you know, operating cost of the pumps. So sure. I can I can include Let's those. Let's be consistent. Yeah, yeah, but again, for case one, scenario one, you don't have a pump; you have a, a fan or a blower. A crop, yeah, so it's a it's a dotted line. You know, it's either in there or not. It's either in the economics or not. But it, it's a possibility. Same for the bypasses. You know, not everyone will have that. And some people, for the for the way they're running their facility water or you know whatever side water you call that, uh, some of those might have a control valve over there. I think that was the <clears throat> how that line diagram was originally built out. Yeah, and I'll, I'll send that to you in just regular two D AutoCAD. Okay. Yeah, let's be consistent. Or, or PDF, whatever you like. But I, I only, I, uh, I, I maybe I'm both if you could. Flat. I do have somebody I could go and make minor changes if we need to for our case, but PDF otherwise would be great. Just to quickly update okay. this. Yep. I'd say and pump then, slash blowers or fluid movers if you want to call it more generically. <laughs> 
Well, even in the air cooled scenario, we're already assuming that, yeah, the IT equipment is air cooled, but the heat's getting mm -hmm. picked up by cracks or crawls in liquid entering form. the liquid then. Right. You've got to get that liquid into the system here. Yeah. Okay. So you're not doing a, an air to air to water heat exchanger. You're doing air to water and then water to water. God, that's. Yeah. You keep losing delta T all along the way. Unfortunately, we have to isolate those loops, Steve. Yeah, that too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Let's move on. So Let's move on. Yep. <laughs> uh, so then I think, Mark, uh, you have this section then. And so when we get Jack's and then some additional discussions, uh, location of the room. Not sure. Can't always tell who's dropping in content. Uh, might have been you, Jaime, but location of room. Yeah, I did it. I did it. Nice. Uh, so that kind of gets some of that going. Um, we have another, let's see. Oop, sorry for skip, scrolling through some of these uh, comments here. Anything to address here? I think some of this I'll just accept. Accept. Oh, couldn't, load, couldn't load user was probably me. Okay. Please write your name uh, if, if it, this happens to you, maybe between parentheses and and so we know that it's you and we can ask you back, please, Steven. Yeah. Next time, I mean, next time you you insert comments. Yeah, there you go. I added my name when I said couldn't load load user. Perfect. I'm saying instead of not just a table, but a, a graph might, you know, yeah, is, that's is good because you can see it's nonlinear. Yeah. Does anybody have a starting figure for that to, to at least drop in? Uh, that can be generated though from that chart on table. The screen right there. Yeah. Okay. 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 These are old comments, but you're going to kind of replace the table and uh, I think that'll be. Should I leave? Yeah. Yeah, I know there, I guess, confusion, and I was the color coding aspect, the green and tan. Um, that was initial. I don't know if we want to leave it like that. I just thought Not it was interesting too. to show the differences of, um, David, like you said, the high delta and low delta. Oh, okay. I don't know if, um, if we still want to highlight that or if that just causes confusion. You know, you can... It, it's another note. dimension. It has to be there somewhere. Weirdly, you know, it's just. I mean, it's mm -hmm. there. I just don't. I don't want it to get lost. I think just a note below the graph, there. or even in the uh, table description, just just to put what that is. I think that's all yeah. that's needed. Mm -hmm. And let's just try that Maybe. for the next iteration. Just add, a legend, just add a legend to the graph. Green is I delta mm -hmm. T. Tan is low yeah. delta T, or whatever. Maybe, maybe mark an additional column after the inlet and other temperatures with delta. There you will go. Be, will yeah. be better to highlight that. It's just called out the specific mm -hmm. uh, numerical value of the delta or just call out delta high, delta low. No, no, the numerical values. Okay. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. It might help to. Clarify it. And so Mark's got some things yeah, I got here. Some stuff I to got still some do things there. too here. Um, I advanced it, uh, David. I wrote these things. I liked it. Uh, uh, I know going Mark, up to that one comment. comment about, yeah, I just added a comment to that, but going up a little bit. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to get into like the network requirements and the security stuff. That is kind of way outside my wheelhouse. Um, Somebody volunteers here? If, you know, whatever, if we want to include network requirements and security level requirements, I can put, you know, maybe two lines as far as security and touch on pulling it out of you can leave my name there i'm going to do i'm good on the pump 
you know, yep. control aspects, just making sure mm -hmm. there's equipment to monitor all of that. That's fine. But um, like security, so we, I could probably put two lines in there about us, you know, it being a separate room. So security is not, it's a different level of security than what would be required to enter the actual data center space. Um, but. Yep. For the sake so of uh, networking, I, I can't speak to security at all, but for the sake of networking and controls, I have been uh, involved in discussions with the folks at DTMF Redfish, uh, and there are other folks within OCP who would see that all communication must include uh, Redfish signals for equipment that has something to do with serving the, the white space. So, for example, we'll be making a schema for CDUs that should very much parallel this. Um, and I can I can put a comment that mentions it, but that work isn't finished. It's ongoing. But the, the future will be that if there's a CDU in here, for example, or something like it, it will communicate back to the white space in Redfish. I think the other thing from a security point of view is that any controls that are handoff switch over between the regular control loop and the heat recovery, not a control loop, the regular cooling loop or facilities loop and the heat recovery loop should all be on the secure side, right? Because you don't want someone to come in and suddenly cut out your, your heat recovery without being able to automatically switch over back to your default cooling system. Absolutely. Let's maybe explicitly ask here somebody from Belimo, for example, <laughs> somebody, maybe uh, somebody from Schneider or something like that as well. Oh, no. Just uh, an idea. Why are you showing us, David? Oh, uh, uh, what I was just going up is kind of look to see what type of diagrams we had uh, prior. I was just thinking about the comment about, um, you know, in our case, we have the option of going to a heat exchanger if uh, for heat reuse. But if we bypass that, it just automatically controls our setup to go to the next stage of our hierarchy of heat rejection. Um, so we just had to make sure somebody can't, like, shut down flow, you know, through control valves. That's the main thing we're concerned about. But if somebody stops using heat reuse, that's fine. Our system's set up to go to the next, uh, in our case, it would be the dry cooler and then cooling towers. I'm just saying access to the, to the, to the flow switching hardware, if you will. Okay, that would I be concerned. Yeah, making sure, being very cautious on that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mark, you had a comment here. You know, I I know sometimes when you like need to replace uh, plates and so forth, you can try to take them out and clean them, or you can just have new ready to go, and it's a lot quicker. You just had a comment about the larger replacement times. Yeah, I'm not. I mean. It's technically correct. I just didn't want it to scare people away or yeah, I guess scare people away, get lost in there. And obviously if there's a heat pump or something, then that would definitely be the critical component. Um, but you don't have to have redundancy for the, the heat reuse, right? Because the uh, heat that's... Reuse is an opportunity, not critical. That's the discussion exactly about. So the redundancy is mostly driven by the requirements of the of taker, right? So it depends on that. It's, it's also written somewhere there in the, in the text as well. Yeah, and, uh, whole, the whole yeah. concept of heat reuse in and of itself is adding a level of redundancy. And yeah, yeah. it's not a guaranteed redundancy, but it's not like we're hindering the system in any way. It's another option to reject heat. Um, exactly, but it all depends on the contract, on the taker, whatever. Yeah. So that's the, yeah. the text here explains that and says, uh, 
I guess it depends Definitely. on the maturity model. Yep. As well, as well. So that's that's what's about that. And then with, also we're talking about redundancy, for example, in the heat exchanger, even if we're not bringing 2N, maybe we're still bringing N, but we are reducing the granularity of the heat exchangers instead of taking a single one heat exchanger, we're taking three, totaling the same heat quantity that they can exchange. So in case of maintenance, you still have some portion that is can be delivered. So you don't have to shut off everything. Mm -hmm. so that's the idea behind that. Yeah, I like this last statement. Yeah. The sentence you just wrote, uh, David, is already the text here, the first one, the second one. Speaking of the heat exchanger, do we want to bring up the subject of how the water side is the heat use? What I, what I want to say, how is the off takers water side treated? Because fouling is yes. a concern. Yes, that, that plenty of waste, probably, and depending on, the, on each case. But this is definitely a topic that we need to mention. That these are considerations. So what was this? The uh, the quality of the off takers water loop. You know, does it have biocides? Is it sufficiently hot? I think if it's sixty five degrees or more, it probably won't foul. But I mean, you're worried about the potential for fouling on the heat exchanger. The materials as well, the wetted materials of that part. True. As well. True. Are you just concerned though that? I mean, again, because your data center will probably have the, the backup systems. Is it just concerned that it's, it's just the responsibility the of the off takers? It's oh, just reliable. about the reliability of the heat reuse. Okay. As being a, uh, a method for heat rejection. Yeah. And, and for people wanting to, you know, take, take your heat, they want to know that you know, it's going to be able to run not just one year, but five years, 10 years, whatever have you, before they commit to building, you know, building into your system, especially for a new site. We've so, kind of to... so basically, you have to specify that the off takers got to make sure that he's, you know, meeting certain requirements on mm -hmm. the quality of his water, on the materials of construction, so you don't get galvanic corrosion or whatever have you. Exactly, because the heat exchanger is an interface and they will belong probably to both of them or maybe to one of them, but you have to take into account what's happening out the outside. Yeah, so I'm going to have some of that responsibility also falls on the off taker. And again, depending on, I guess this really gets into the economics and policy aspect, but um, depending on the level of redundancy required, if the off-taker has other heat sources mm -hmm. and doesn't necessarily always require the data center heat, maybe they're not concerned and shutting it offline, you know, once a year to clean it is more advantageous than them worrying about upkeeping their water quality. But mm -hmm. I think just have a discussion about that. Question is if we if we maybe open a, a new sub section for water or for coolant or off taker coolant or whatever off taker part. I don't know if we need a whole subsection or okay. Uh, right. Just a general mention of the uh, implications and considerations that they need to make on their water quality and longevity of the share yeah. equipment. I mean to some people, water is just water, and we know that not all water is the same. I have this all the problem all the time with my my chem engineering students. You know, they think cooling water is the same as river water, is the same as well water, is the same as <laughs> the ionized water. No, it's just water. I say no. You, you use river water, and it, you heat up exceed 130 degree return temperature, you're going to have inverse precipitation. You're going to foul your heat exchanger in five weeks. What I can do is look at, I thought one of these other documents by ACF had some info on water. Oh, yeah, that's might be interesting. 
So it would be more just a reference versus us trying to create additional. Yeah, no, it's just it's just yeah. saying, hey, pay attention. Oh no, no. Oh, I agree. And it's good to call it out. Yeah. Yeah, shared equipment response. Go on. Yeah. Again, this would all be part of yeah, the other end, business end. Uh, we don't have to boil the ocean again here. We could just call that with a simple note. Hey, the off-taker needs to worry about their water quality on such and such agreements and requirements. Hmm. Exactly. And consider what are, what is your going to be your off-taker yep. for defining your equipment. And in that, yeah, yeah, fish farming would be different. District heating would be different. Yeah. You can have exactly. a lot to quantify for everyone. Yeah, I could just see the fish farm guy saying, oh, we'll just put put the uh, ocean water through the exchange. Yeah. So, Corrode the hell out of it when it's because it's stainless steel and What salt. could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> you can just make a bold note and call it. That's it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Moving on. So there's a little salty yep. deal. <laughs> so I've got my section here to do a little bit more of. Matching sec jumping to see, uh, section five because there's a lot of content that's been added by people, so appreciate that. Uh, and there's some comments that's mainly what I want to get to. So, trying to see what's this maybe off topic referring to. Not sure where that made me jump. Um, heat storage, those I are guess. new. There's a new yeah, this, yeah. Heat That's storage is really nice. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Yes, thank okay. you. Yeah, you're welcome. I, I have uh, a question about that later, but we can start with a Oh no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um there there was a um suggestion to add a recommended size for the or like a sample size for heat storage. And yes. I was not completely sure what assumptions I should make for that. I used, uh, it's, it's further down. This just explains the heat storage process mm -hmm. itself, but yeah, that, that one. Um, I said like a one megawatt uh, data center, uh, or a data center that wants to store one megawatt of heat for 30 minutes takes um, about 43 cubic meter of heat storage. I wanted to ask if any of you have an idea if that's an acceptable, uh, I don't know, quantity that, or if you should do something smaller on, or maybe just do, less storage. Uh, no, um, th that's, a, that's a good starting point. And like we, you know, if you go up, we have like different capacities starting with one megawatt, two megawatt and mm -hmm. up to three megawatts. And so we could start using these numbers and we could define the storage room equivalent mm -hmm. 43 meter cube to show, hey, this is like the size of, uh, you know, storage application. That's a it's a little over 11,000 gallons. That's a decent sized tank. Yeah. Uh, in terms of fabrication, you can get, you can go up to about 20,000 gallons, which would be what, about... Uh, 80 cubic meters that can be shop fabricated and delivered over the road. Bigger than that, you're going to talk about field fabrication that gets expensive. I'm but, also not completely or, sure. Or do you what... go to phase change material instead? Of, you know, yeah, a, yeah, exactly. With, with uh, molten, molten salt or something, Glauber salt, something like I'm that. I'm also not. I'm not quite sure whether a 30 minute period is like of consistent withdrawal is. A valid starting point or not? Because I, I have not yeah. had no idea how so, big of a gap that has to bridge. Well, that will depend, of course, of the use case. Yeah, but definitely. I would, I would say uh, that the most probable storage would be hours. I mean, would it be for hours, or even for longer periods? Of course, we're going probably to very large tanks. Mm -hmm. I but could also. Uh, like we could double it to one hour and then you can scale it up if you need to. Yeah, we can extrapolate. I mean, this is extrapolable. Yeah. I mean, we can take these values and just it's every it's linear proportional. Is it? Probably yeah, is, right? yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, so. technically it is not because the bigger the tank is, the uh, larger your heat losses are. But if you mm -hmm. say it's perfect insulation, then you can scale it linearly. So we yeah. have it. It's less, the bigger tank is less heat loss per unit volume, though. True, true. Okay. 
So which means that we can do a, a very simple formula and uh, put it there as an approximation. Do you guys agree? Yeah. yeah, but again, I would say that the upper limit for something that can be easily fabricated is on the order of 60 to 80 cubic meters. So if you're talking about a five megawatt data center, you're going to need multiple tanks. Yeah, unless okay. you go to phase change material or something like that. Steven, it's okay. Should I we, mean, this can should be we handmade. An example? <laughs> Sorry. Should we include an example how low you can go if you include uh, phase change material? But like, you might uh, need to. Mm. And and one other thing to do perhaps is revisit the database of systems that already exist. Uh, heat storage of this size isn't the norm, so it might be a recommendation that we have in the paper because we understand the value of it, but not everyone's going to do it at any size. It doesn't apply to all of the use cases. True. Yeah. And do you just want to maybe introduce advanced things you could go off and explore, but do we want to get to, yeah. I mean, this is great. Thank you for doing this. Uh, two pages yeah. seems like a good, I just, versus like going into three or four pages and this is hey. very compact and very nice to give you things to think through. Yeah, exactly. I will, Maybe you want to would... say as a minimum heat storage, the time you need to f do a switch over to get back to your conventional cooling loop. And who's... Um, or your convention he heating loop if you're on the user side. Yeah, who's, How whose much responsibility should that mean? fall in? Is that right. the responsibility of the people cooling the data or the responsibility right. of the people... Oh, hold on, hold on. I mean, we, we have, I mean it's, it's just the, the storage here is, is, is put here to... So for the developers of data centers to consider some space or maybe depending on their business case to have the storage mm -hmm. on their site or leave it that place for others, rent it or just leave it. I mean, to consider that space, right? So I yep. think it's good if we put, well, be aware that one megawatt hour of thermal energy, I mean, we have here 0 0.5 megawatt hours. So one megawatt hour of thermal energy needs 86 cubic meters or 80 something cubic meters. And uh, that if you need longer periods, you will need uh, a lot of space or underground storage or whatever, or phase change, as Stephen said. Do you agree, yeah. guys? I, I think that's I think it's important to point approach. out that you need some kind of a buffer just to allow a switch over between heat reuse and conventional cooling. And can, you know, if there's an upset on either side. Do you think so? I don't have yeah. enough knowledge to touch on I that mean, as far as how long it takes to fire up a boiler if the off taker is no longer receiving the data center heat, but they need heat at the moment. Like, what is that time period that it takes depends. to get their so, systems up? Yeah, we've got about two minutes in case people need to start dropping off. But I, I think this is the goal is just to give a sense of size just for people, the readers to think about. And then we don't have to go into great detail on any of these, but doesn't hurt to in a sentence or two maybe just introduce the topics that if you want to go off and explore this yeah, and just add a sense i'd need to need to consider how much time is is needed for a switch over yeah i think yeah just mentioning that yeah and leaving it at that yeah okay and 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 team like we would continue working on the storage part but this is a good start oh it's excellent yes thank you yep. And we could in cloud know, and heat too. You were when you were doing your introductions. I've always been impressed by the uh, the quality of the uh, the graphics, telling a story. Ooh, thank you. Yeah, okay. good compliment. So and maybe, maybe we are about to finish. It's just to know, so the others know what is still missing or what we have. We have boosting mechanisms, electrical heaters. That's a part. I think maybe that's a slide from Microsoft presentation. Maybe mm -hmm. we get something from them. And heat to power. There is a mention about organic, uh, no, heat to cooling, which is absorption cooling, absorption cooling as well, and heat to power. There is a mention about organic ranking cycle and the luminescent uh, ideas, I mean, uh, the thermal, isothermal cycle. Okay, and then things that to put, then the metrics and things to put on the appendix. So we still have lots to do, yep. guys. We do. Uh, let's see, just to verify, are we able to have our meeting? The next, yes, the first Thursday, because when's OCP conference? 
the 14th. So we can still have the next meeting and um I will say to double a one to ask for another we could one. or at least internally yeah, yeah. and I mean, other in, people are welcome to join but yeah we should probably have another one in in two weeks sure yeah okay at least All right. uh, the three of us and then others are welcome or just uh we'll get ever maybe we'll yeah. reach out by email keep the conversation yeah. going and thank you for those that have contributed uh getting a lot more solid content. And then the other thing that we'll need to do and we'll probably reach out is just um, the slide deck. Maybe we'll share that of what images we're using because some of those are from the Net Zero Innovation Hub and yeah. uh, we want to incorporate that in the actual presentation. So we'll do that by emails. Perfect. Okay. Okay, then let's work offline and uh, we'll send an invite in within, for two weeks. I mean, 19th of September. Perfect. Sounds, Sounds good. good. See you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.